فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم He should not read to the sheikh while the sheikh is busy or irritable or in a state of grief or sorrow or if he is relaxing and hungry, thirsty, sleepy, anxious or in any state that may prevent him from concentrating. Instead, the student must take advantage of the times when his teacher is most alert and prepared. The teacher now, what's the best times to read on your teacher and choosing the right time? The author here is talking about two things here. He's going to be speaking about the choosing of the right time and also being patient upon that knowledge. The author says, Don't read on the teacher while he's preoccupied. He's busy-minded. He is distressed. He's got issues that he wants. To. He's, not in a, he's not in a tranquil state right now. Okay? He's a bit depressed. Okay, maybe not depressed, but distressed, saddened by something. Or the teacher's over the moon, happy, excited. All those times his mind is not focused. The teacher's very, very hungry. Okay, or he's very thirsty. Or he feels very tired. The teacher's very tired. And etc. Or the teacher somehow is scared about something. Okay. All of those times are going to prevent, don't read on him at this time. The reason is because you're not going to get the best quality from him. You're not choosing the right time to read on him. Because at this particular moment, his mind is all over the place. The chances of him actually giving you justice in your recitation is very, is very low. Now. Also, among the etiquettes of the student is that he should be patient with his teacher's harshness or his ill conduct. So when the teacher shows you bad manners, the teacher, uh, he deals with you in a very unjust way, you feel like. He wronged you, for instance, that you actually endure that. And you look at the bigger picture and what you're going to gain through that. Now. Uh, or his ill conduct and should not let that prevent him from staying with him and from having faith in the completeness of his abilities. So this shouldn't get in your way. That with the way the teacher dealt with you should not stop you from what? Anmulazamati he's sticking with him. And believing he's completing his understanding and his knowledge. Now you should interpret any actions and opinions that seem incorrect positively by giving his teacher the benefits of the doubt. And one who is unable to do this will either have limited success or no success at all. Subhanallah. Any actions that come from your teacher or speeches which he says that seem and let your al fasad from the apparent it seems corrupt. You give to your teacher ta'wilat sahiha. You find interpretations for him. Maybe he meant that. Maybe that's what he was trying to say. Maybe that was the reason. Maybe, 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 maybe. Explanations you have for him. You have 70 excuses for him. The author says, anyone who doesn't get, who doesn't do that, who doesn't come with that, then that person is what? He's going to have qalilu tawfiq. Allah is going to have little tawfiq. Little is Allah going to give you the ability to benefit in this world. Or rather, or adimu, or Allah is going to fully take it away from you. You're not really going to benefit from this life. وَإِذَا جَفَاهُ الشَّيْخُ So tawfiq is gone from you. And isn't that what we look for? You lose tawfiq just by, by not inter... So he says something to you, it doesn't make sense to you. It doesn't adapt on your side. Say, maybe this is what he's trying to say. Maybe he meant this. Maybe I misunderstood him. Maybe his um, Arabic isn't that good. Maybe his English is not that good. That's what he meant. Maybe his Somali is not that good or his Urdu. So when he was trying to say, he was trying to say like that. Okay, it makes sense. You've got excuses and explanations for the teacher. Naam. If his sheikh directly reprimands him, he should be fast to apologize and concede that he was at fault and therefore deserving of blame. So if the teacher jafahu, if the teacher reprehends the student, that the student ibtada'u bil i'tidal ila sheikh, he says, Sheikh, please forgive me. Wallahi, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have acted in that way. The student hastens to that. And that he shows that the mistake and the shortcoming is from him, the student. Ah. And the blame is on the student. He says, it's on my fault. It's not my fault. Because that's more beneficial for you in this world and hereafter. 
this dunya and in the hereafter the benefits connected to blaming yourself why in this dunya because the teacher when he sees that from you he's going to be open-hearted for you he's going to give you every single thing he has he's not going to hold back from you anymore you with me and he's going to give you every knowledge huh? ولذلك, the leader of the Azariqa, huh? the real leader of the Azariqa, I forgot his name, is something, Al Azraq. He used to always come to Ibn Abbas and he would always debate with Ibn Abbas. Every time he saw Ibn Abbas, he would challenge Ibn Abbas. He would argue with him. He would give Abdullah ibn Abbas a hard time. And the scholars, they said, because of that, he was prevented from knowledge. Why would Ibn Abbas want to teach somebody who's argumentative, somebody who's hard headed, stubborn? Arrogant, full of himself, believes he knows. He wants to prove his art. A student doesn't come like that to a teacher. He comes humble. I don't know anything. I really want to learn. That's more beneficial for you in your hereafter and your worldly affairs. Now, this, this is more beneficial for the student, both in this world and in the hereafter, and will purify his teacher's heart towards him. The teacher, when you hasten to ask for forgiveness, it will clean his heart for you. He will clean, it will what? It will clean his heart for you. And as I said before, once his heart is clean for you, what is he going to do? He's going to be so happy and excited to teach you. And he will give you everything he has. Now. Some have said, he, does not, he who does not humble himself and seek knowledge will spend his life in the blindness of ignorance. But he who is patient upon it will find honor both in this world and in the next. The author says, Man lam ala Anyone who does not show patience to the humiliation of knowledge. Humility. Dhul means humility. It means humility. Now, Dhul, that's what it means. So anyone who doesn't go through the humility and the humiliation of knowledge, baqiya umrahu, you'll spend the rest of your life fi amayati jahala. You'll spend the rest of your life in the blindness of ignorance. The word Umur in the Arabic language, it has three lugat, three languages. You can say Umur bidammi by placing a dhamma on it. You say. You can also say Um bitaskini. You can place a sukun on it. And the last one is you place a fatha on it, which is you say Amr. So here is here is baqiya umrahu. You say, fi amayat al You spend the rest of your life, the span of your life, you spend fi amayat al in the blindness of ignorance. Wa man sabr alayhi and anyone who becomes patient with it, ala amru la azzi al akhirati wa dunya. Then this person will be patient. And, sorry, and anyone who shows patience, his matter will finally go towards honor in this world and hereafter. He will be honorable in this dunya and he will be honorable in the hereafter. So look at it, brothers and sisters. You either go for the humiliation of seeking knowledge or you endure the humiliation of ignorance. You choose. You either take on the humiliation of seeking knowledge or you live with the humiliation of ignorance for the rest of your life. Now. One of Ibn Abbas's popular sayings is, I humbled myself in order to learn and so became dignified by those who came to learn from me. Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Dallaltu taliban. When I was a seeking knowledge, as a student of knowledge, I was humiliated. I felt I had to do things that were not befitting. Remember Ibn Abbas used to go out. He used to sleep in front of the people's doors, the scholars that he used to take knowledge from. He would, the dust and the sand would go into his face. This is the cousin of the messenger. But then look what he said. Now that I've become the one who knows, I've become honorable. Everyone wants to come to me. Everyone wants to take knowledge from me. Everyone. But then what was before that? Before Izza, which is honor, comes humiliation. You can't get both of them. One has to come before the other. Then the author says, فَصْلٌ فِي الْحِرْسِ عَلَى الْعِلْمِ وَمِنْ آدَابِهِ الْمُتَأَكَّدِ وَمِنْ آدَابِهِ الْمُتَأَكِّدَةِ أَنْ يَكُونَ حَرِيصًا عَلَى التَّعْلُمْ مُوَاضِبًا عَلَيْهِ فِي جَمِيعِ الْأَوْقَاتِ الَّتِي يَتَمَكَّنُ مِنْهُ فِيهَا 
ولا يقنع بالقليل مع تمكنه من الكثير ولا يحمل نفسه ما لا يطيق مخافة من الملل وضياعا وضياع ما حصل وهذا يختلف باختلاف الناس والأحوال وإذا جاء إلى مجلس الشيخ فلم يجده انتظره ولا زم بابه ولا يفوت وظيفته إلا أن يخاف كراهة الشيخ لذلك بأن يعلم من حاله لقراء في وقت بعينه وأنه لا يقرئ في غيره وإذا وجد الشيخ نائما أو مشتغلا بمهم لم يستأذن عليه بل يصبر على استيقاظه وفراغه أو ينصرف والصبر أولى كما قال ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما وغيره يفعلون وينبغي أن يأخذ نفسه بالاجتهاد في التحصيل في وقت الفراغ والنشاط وقوة البدن ونباهة الخاطر وقلة الشاغلات قبل عوارض البطالة وارتفاع المنزلة فقد قال أمير المؤمنين عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه تفقه قبل أن تسودوا معناه اجتهدوا في كمال أهليتكم وأنتم أتباع قبل أن تصبروا سادة فإنكم إذا صرتم سادة متبوعين امتنعتم من التعلم لارتفاع منزلتكم وكثرة شغلكم وهذا معنى قول الإمام الشافعي رضي الله عنه تفقه قبل أن ترأس فإذا رسأت فلا سبيل إلى التفقه وهذا معنى, قول وهذا معنى قول الإمام الشافعي رضي الله عنه تفقه قبل أن ترأس فإذا رأست فلا سبيل إلى التفقه لا. Let me finish this whole chapter because we finish about fourth part. في التب في التبكير في القراءة وفي نفي الحسد والعجب وينبغي أن يبكر بقراءته على الشيخ أول النهار لحديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم بارك لأمتي في بكورها. وينبغي أن يحافظ على قراءة محفوظه وينبغي أن لا يؤثر بنو بنومة بنوبته وينبغي أن يحافظ على قراءة محفوظه وينبغي وينبغي أن لا يؤثر بنوبة غيره What does it say for you guys? Did it say Bino Betty for you guys? Did it say everybody did it say that it's Well the word Bino Betty says for you guys. Wayambari Ayuhafid Ala Kirati Mahfudihi Wayambari Wayambari Alla Yuthira Bino Betty Gaira Fa in al Ethara Bil Kurbi Makruhum Bihilaf il Ethari Bihud in Nufus. فإنه محبوب فإن رأى الشيخ المصلحة في الإيثار في بعض الأوقات لمعنى, لمعنى شرعي فأشار عليه بذلك امتثل أمره ومما يجب عليه وتتأكد الوصية به ألا يحسد ألا ألا يحسد ألا يحسد أحدا من رفقته أو غيره بإحسد بن على فضيلة رزقه الله الكريم إياها وأن لا يعجب, يعجب بما حصل وقد قدمنا إضاح هذا في آداب الشيخ وطريقه في نفي العجب أن يذكر نفسه أنه لم يحصل ما حصل بحوله وقوته وإنما هو فضل من الله تعالى فلا ينبغي أن يعجب بشيء لم يخترعه بل أودعه 
بل أودعه الله تعالى في وطريق في نفي الحسد أن يعلم أن حكمة الله تعالى اقتضت جعل هذه الفضيلة في هذا فينبغي أن لا فينبغي أن لا يعترض عليها ولا يكره حكمة أراده الله أراده الله تعالى ولم يكرهها والله أعلم New section. Among the etiquettes highly recommended for the student of knowledge is that he should be enthusiastic in seeking knowledge. He should be enthusiastic in seeking knowledge, seeking it consistently at all times, uh, at, all, at all the times he is able to do so without being satisfied with doing a little, if he is capable of doing more. Conversely, he should not burden himself with more than he can bear, lest he become bored and lose that which he has already learned, as different people vary in their ability to learn. Here the author, Rahimahullah, he talks about striving in knowledge. He says, وَمِنْ آدَابِهِ الْمُتَأَكِّدَةِ One of the emphasized manners that are needed is أَنْ يَكُونَ حَرِيصًا عَلَى التَّعَلُّمِ That he strives in learning. مُوَاضِمًا عَلَيْهِ فِي جَمِيعِ الْأَوْقَاتِ الَّتِي يَتَمَكَّنُ مِنْهُ فِيهَا And that he strives, he works hard in all of the times to get to the bottom of seeking knowledge. He wants, he will not stop. Every moment he gets, he's reading, he's writing, he's authoring, he's listening. Even when he can't read anymore and he's physically tired, he listens. He puts on a recording and he listens to the mashayikh and the ulama. وَلَا يَقْنَعُ بِالْقَلِيلِ He never is pleased with the minimum. Never. مَعَ تَمَكُّنِهِ مِنَ الْكَثِيرِ When he's able to get the more. When he's able to get a lot. He doesn't say to himself, oh, at least I got something today. That doesn't please him. He likes a lot. وَلَا يُحَمِّلُ نَفْسَهُ بِمَا لَا يُطِيقُ And he also, what he doesn't do is, he doesn't overburden himself as well. مَخَافَةً مِنَ الْمَلَلِ وَضَيَاعِ مَا حَصَّلْ Fear that he may endure tiredness and he may lose what he's already gained. هذا يختلف باختلاف الناس والأحوال And this differs from person to person, situations to situations. Some people, what they can take, others can't take. And some situations where a person can do something, another person may not be able to do that. So, but don't ever be pleased, my brothers and sisters, with the minimum. Why are you going to be pleased with the minimum? The Prophet sallallahu he said, If you're going to ask Allah for Jannah, don't say, Oh Allah, I don't care, just give me Jannah. No. Ask for the best place in Jannah, which is what? Jannatul Firdaus. Some people are like, Allah said in the Quran, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازْ وَمَنْ حَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَعُ الْغُرُورِ As long as I'm saved from the hellfire, as long as I'm taken to Jannah, that's what matters to me. We'll say your aspiration is very low. You don't have the real aspiration that is needed from a, a seeker of the hereafter. Huh? What you should be wanting for yourself is the highest level in Jannah. You want Jannah to fill the dose. Some of the Salaf, they used to pray Salah and their legs would get tired. And they would have a stick after the prayer. They would have a stick next to them. And they would whip their legs. They would whip their legs and they would say to their legs, أَنْتَ أَحَقُّ بِالضَّرْبِ مِنْ حِمَارِي You deserve to be beaten more than my donkey. أَتُرِيدُ أَنْ تَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةِ Do you want to enter Jannah when you have a competition with Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman? Their aspiration was that high. They were competing with the companions, the ones who were promised Jannah are alive. They was like, وَاللَّهِ لَأُزَحِمَنَّهُمْ by Allah, I'm going to race with them in the Prophet's fountain, alayhi salatu wasalam. In Jannah, I'm going to try to, I'm not going to let that happen. Hmm? High aspiration, right? And that's the true person who sets himself the highest goal and he's going to achieve it. While other people are just talking, he's heading himself a big goal, which he's going to achieve. So that's why it's very important, brothers. Don't say, as long as I learn ayatul ahkam, that's enough. Is that all that's needed for jihad? I'll learn that. No. I'm going to learn the whole Quran. And I'm going to learn the qiraat. And I'm going to learn this. Set yourself a big goal. Now. If the student arrives to find the sheikh absent, he should wait at his door and not give up unless he knows that his sheikh will dislike teaching at this particular time or that he teaches only at certain times of the day. If you come to the teacher's house, you come to the sheikh's house and you don't find him, in wait, and stay next to his door. 
ولا يفوت وظيفته don't leave and say oh I just left I waited for a minute or two and I walked away right you wait سلف هذه الأمة they used to sleep in front of the door wait the sheikh says إلا أن يخاف كراهة الشيخ لذلك unless you fear that the teacher might dislike teaching this time maybe he doesn't want to teach at this particular time he doesn't want to teach that what you do in this situation then okay you can leave but other than that you sit and you wait until he wakes up and he opens the door for you however long that it takes if he finds that his sheikh is asleep or busy he should not wake him up or seek his permission instead he should be patient and wait until he wakes up or becomes available so you find that the teacher is tired or sleeping or is doing something then or he's busy with something very important then the person should just be leave the sheikh alone and you should wait around okay until he wakes up or if, until he finishes what he's doing and to be patient is needed at this time as ibn abbas ta'ala anhu used to do he never used to knock the door never he would come and would just wait because the teacher already knows what time the class used to be right there's no need for you to knock on the door so he would just wait in abbas he would sit around waiting for him <coughs> this was this was on the this was the agreed time until he would come out and when he says that Ibn Abbas did this this is the famous story this is the story Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu the Prophet died when the Prophet died Ibn Abbas was only 13 okay and Ibn Abbas came to a group of the com uh, companions he came to a Ansari man and he said to him Halumma fal -al -ashab come on let's go he was looking for a companion so he says to the companion come let's go and let's gain knowledge from the companions of the Prophet. They are amongst us, they're with us today. They are large in number today. So, come, let's gain knowledge from them. So he said to him, fascination to you. To who is he saying this to? Hmm? The, the Ansari is saying this to Ibn Abbas. He said to him, Ibn Abbas. Fascination be to you, Ibn Abbas. Uh, do you see um, has it been shown to you that the people are ever going to need you that's what people say to you you're never going to be a scholar you you never going to be a scholar they try to destroy your your, your, your drive they want to belittle you they like the idea of you not looking you're going to say nah never, never. you think people are ever going to need knowledge from you uh, so that's what he said to him do you see that the people يفتقرون إليك وفي الناس من أصحاب رسول الله من فيهم do you think the people are ever going to need you when there is the companions of the Prophet alive? The Abu Bakr is alive, and Umar is alive, and Uthman is alive, and the noble companions are alive. Do you really think that the people are ever going to want to know knowledge from you? Here they say to you that the Kibar ulama are alive. Do you think ever you'll be ever needed? So Ibn Abbas, what did he do? That all didn't get to him. He just left him. I went and I gathered knowledge from the companions of the Prophet. فَإِنْ كَانَ لَيَبْلُغُنِ الْحَدِيثُ عَنْ رَجُلٍ And then a narration would reach me regarding a particular man. I would find out that one companion has a narration. It would reach me. He's got a hadith of the Prophet. فَآتِبْ And I would travel to him. I would come to his door. فَأَتَسَوَّدُ لِدَاءِ عَلَى بَابِهِ تُسْفِي الْرِيحُ عَلَيَّ مِنَ التُّرَابِ And I would lay, he would sit down, lie down in front of the, the door of the, 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 the companion. He would cover his face. And he said that the sand will cover me. The sand will go over me. Now you have to realize he's from the best lineage. He's a prophet's cousin. He already met the prophet. Are you with me? He's already met the prophet. Not to mention that the prophet made dua for him. So because the prophet made dua for him, he knows that he's already going to learn, right? Is he not? He's got a dua from the prophet. All of those factors didn't work in, in the way it worked for us today. What did he say? He actually worked hard. So he sat down in front of their door. He wouldn't knock. And they would come out and they would say to him, Ibn Amr Rasulullah, the prophet's cousin. What brought you to your house? Why did you send somebody to me? I will come to you. I would then say, I should come to you. And then I ask him about hadith. Then Ansari man lived on. The Ansari man, he saw me in a gathering with 
I was teaching and all of the people were around me and he looked at me and he said this young boy he was smarter than me he was what? he was smarter than me and that's the reality of so much people when you're doing khayr you're spreading knowledge and you're teaching the people people always discredit you don't listen don't listen focus on the goal that you set yourself do what you're doing I promise you those same people will come to you and say to you can you teach me now can I benefit from you can I huh? they'll say that to you don't even look towards their direction their absence is the same as their presence that's how you should see us like they're not even there they're called background noise they're what they're background noise they should be nothing to you they are the ones who are going to come to you tomorrow and they are the ones who are going to say to you they're the ones who doesn't benefit they don't benefit themselves huh? <coughs> keyboard warriors keyboard warriors is what they're called right they're good on instagram and twitter facebook that's what they're good at those people they've they just want everybody to be like them that's what they want they want everybody to be like them so those type of people you don't give focus or importance to no stating that he should leave but it is better for him to be patient and wait as this is what ibn abbas may Allah be pleased with him and others used to do he should train himself in attaining knowledge and to make use of his free time his health and the strength of his body and mind towards achieving this end and to take advantage of being clear-minded and away from distractions before he becomes preoccupied and busy due to his advanced uh, advancement in rank. Umar ibn al-Khuttar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Seek knowledge before you become, become leaders. This means strive to learn as best as possible while you are still followers. As once you become leaders, you will lose your ability to study due to your inevitable preoccupation and your acquired positions. This is also what Imam al-Shafi'i meant when he said, Seek knowledge before you lead, because once you become leaders, there will be no opportunity for you to seek knowledge. The student should come to his shaykh at an early hour of the day. The author here, Rahimullah, he says, وَيَنْبَغِ It is needed أَنْ يَأْخُذَ نَفْسُ بِالْإِجْتِهَادِ فِي تَحْصِيلِ فِي وَقْتِ الْفَرَاجِ وَالْنَشَاطِ that the student of knowledge strives and he puts effort in at the time of faragh. Faragh means when the person is doing nothing. The time when you're most enthusiastic, that's why we always choose the morning classes now. Seven in the morning until one o'clock, that's good. That's waqtul faragh. People are not doing anything much. The people are also, what do you call it, nashat, enthusiastic. Okay? Waqawwati al-badan, and your body is strong at that particular moment. And your brain is open and you're ready to take on information. Also, in the morning, you're preoccupied, you're, you're, you're not much preoccupied because you just woke up. There's nothing that's busy. You can straight away take on knowledge. But when you study in the evening or the afternoon, all the morning what you've been accumulating and the information and the things that you were coming across to, it will busy you. It will busy you. They will busy you. So all of that is the best timing he's saying here. قبل عوارض البطالة وارتفاع المنزلة. Also, you learn before you become something. You learn before you become a leader. You before you get in charge. This is a big problem. Some people are leaders, like you're a husband, and a lot of the times it gets in people's ways when they get married. They feel like, oh, I can't. My wife can't see me studying now. Or the wife says to her husband, oh, I can't see me studying now. Some of these are leadership. Or the children mm -hmm. seeing their father studying now. All of that is something that gets in people's way. Or when a person becomes a leader, they don't want to study anymore. And this is incorrect. But if this person works hard before they become any of that, it's, it's better. But even then, when you do become in charge and you become a person of leadership, you should always remember to still seek knowledge. And he brings a statement of who Umar ibn Khattab where he said تفقه قبل أن تسوّدوا Learn before you're made in charge Bukhari narrated this معلقاً What do you do? You learn and you attain knowledge before you what? Become leaders And I had Bukhari and I read Bukhari he added on to وبعد أن تسوّدوا And even after when you're made in charge you still learn Before and after you still stop 
You're always learning. That's why many parents, what they do is they drop off their kids in the masjid and they don't sit with their children and they don't learn with them. That's another bad manners. You know what, how powerful it means to your child when you sit down and he sees you take a pen and paper? That's a big lesson for him. He'll copy you. It's a big wake up call for him. He respects you and he respects how you respect knowledge. And it will, it will grow in his eyes. The wife sees her husband studying and learning. That's respect for her. That's, res that's the respect that you attain and you gain. Husband sees his wife striving, learning, educating herself, putting her head to seeking knowledge. It's something that grows respect in his heart towards her, how she honors and she gives virtue to knowledge. But we don't, Shaitan draws us another picture. He makes it think to us, ah, she can't see me alone, man, I can't let that happen. Or the wife goes, nah, ah, she, he can't see me studying now. I have to look like I know what I'm talking about. Mushkila. Eh? We find that. So he says, Make sure you nurture yourself and you grow and you fulfill your goals and your potentials before you become a leader. Why else you're a follower? The reason is because it prevents you from seeking knowledge once you become a leader and people are following you. The reason is because all of those followers are going to be like, oh, oh. Somebody you sit under. So why are we sitting with you again? Uh, this is where you get worried. Your students are now going to sit with somebody else. Nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make it look like it's only me. Mushkila. وَكَثْرَةِ شُغَلِكُمْ And also, once you become in charge, you become preoccupied, busy. صح? You got work, you got wife to provide for, kids to provide for, you got this to pay, you got this to pay. You get busy. With that comes responsibilities. But when you're young, you don't even need to think about where the money comes from, who's paying it. Yeah, you don't have to worry about all of that. Why that ma'ana qawli Imam Shafi'i? That's what Imam Shafi'i meant. Tafaqqa qabla an tar'as tar'asa fa'idha ra'asta fala sabila ila tafaqqa. Learn before you come lead, become leaders, because if you become leaders, then there's no path in attaining knowledge. I'll explain it by myself here. Faslun here, the author says, what is needed is that the person comes in the morning. Early morning, the person does bukur, what's known as bukur. Sha'bi was asked, how did you attain knowledge? What did he say? They came up to him and they said, how did you gain knowledge? And what did he say? Three things. What was one of the things that he mentions? So for the first one is, al bukur ka bukur al ghurab. I early morning like the crow. That's one of the reasons how I learn knowledge. Second was what? Sabr, kasabr al himar. And the third one was what? Ah. And was Adam al Itina, wa Adam al Itimad. And I didn't rely on anyone. I didn't rely on who? I didn't rely on anybody. I only relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With those three, a person will gain knowledge. Early morning. In the early morning, the person should get out of their bed and study. Based on the hadith of the Prophet, Oh Allah, place barakah in my ummah for the early morning. Also, what is needed is So uh, you read in the morning, you memorize the Quran in the morning, you study in the morning, the information will settle in. Also, what's needed is that you hafid ala qira'ati mahfudhi. What's also needed is that you what? You protect your recitation, which you've memorized, you safeguard it. How do you safeguard it? You safeguard it by going over it again and again and again and revising it. What does he say the word binobati means? He just used the word give up, right? No other meaning. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I thought he was going to say a better word. 
You shouldn't give up your turn. Um, your, your, when it comes to righteous deeds, you should not let anyone take your position. Some people, they think they're being good to you by giving you the first line of the prayer. The first line of the Salah is what? It's the best line, right? In the Salah. Some people, they'll give it to you. I'll take it. I'll never turn it down. But you're wrong to do that. This is not what you do. You're meant to hasten and in good. But if you do give it to me, it's your mistake. I'm not going to turn it down for sure. Are you with me? But you've just left, you've just left and lost a reward. Mm. Things like that you don't give to anybody. You don't. That's what you should do. Something that gets you closer to Allah, giving it to somebody else, something that will take you to Jannah. The day of judgment, would you give your righteous deeds to anybody? No one would. No one would. But when it comes to worldly things, to give it up for the people, that's a good characteristic. But when it comes to worldly things, give it to the, up for the people. You've got a car, just give your car keys to somebody. Say, take it, it's your car, I'll give it to you, I don't want it anymore. You want my phone, take it. But I'll never give you my books. I'll never give you my books. I will hasten to the message with you. I'll compete with you on all of that. These are things I can't. Sah? Yeah. Because these things are worldly matters. فَإِنْ رَأَى الشَّيْخُ الْمَصْلَحَةُ فِي إِثَارِ فِي بَعْضِ الْأَوْقَاتِ لِمَعْنًا شَرْعِيٍّ فَأَشَارَ عَلَيْهِ بِذَلِكِ امْتَثَلْ أَمْرَهُ But if you see that your teacher tells you to give precedence to somebody else in a matter for whatever reason, maybe it might be مَنْ مَعْنَ الشَّرْعِي It might be a legislational reason. You've got shar'i evidence for it. Then what do you do in this situation? امْتَثِلْ أَمْرَهُ Follow your teacher. He says to you, no, listen. Tomorrow, you're not going to lead the prayer. Or you're not going to do the adhan. Fulan is going to do the adhan. Okay, he does that. You follow him in it. You what? You follow him in it. And also from the advices is that you don't, you don't have jealousy towards your, com, your colleagues. But other than them, in something Allah has blessed them with, you have a student in the class with you whose memorization is fast. Allahumma barik. He looks at the page one time or two times. He knows it, he can read it straight away. You don't say, Ilahi wa Take this away from him. What, you just memorize the second page? No. And you get jealous, and you show hasa towards him, and you get the whole class against him. Look at him, oh, smarty pants, smarty pants. Yeah? In school, remember the smart kid was always bullied, right? In the school, he used to bully, that's hasad. That's called hasad. Are you with me? I knew that I knew one Pakistani brother who was very smart in physics. Well, he knew well, science, he was very good at it. It's very good, mashallah. Amazing. He was very, very good. Amazing. But he will never act, he'll never answer questions. He will always pretend to be dumb. And I knew he knew. I'm like, you know. You know. We the rest are slow. We're all slow. But you know, why you do that? No, I don't I don't want to look like smarty pants. I don't want people to that's what it was. So he would, he would deliberately go wrong in answers and sometimes he would say, I don't know. And the teacher knows he knows. So she would ask him. I just said, I don't know. And then later he would tell me what it is. Are you with me? <coughs> His name used to be called Shokat. Now that I grew older, I met him one time. I said, Shokat, Shokat fi luhuqi ahl al-kufr. This is... <laughs> you shouldn't be scared. You should have said what you've... <laughs> You know what shokat means? What is it? Strength. Huh? Yeah, strength. Shokat means strength. Yeah, strength and power. That's what you, courage, and strength and ability. Sah? You're not even a shokat. You have no strength in the class. What happened to you? Scared. So this is an issue. This is called hasid. His students have shown hasid to him, so he doesn't want to answer the questions. Another thing is that what happens is, Conceit happens. Sometimes some people, they know they're smart. You know, there's, there's one or two. In my private school, there was a kid called Scott. His name was Scott. Scott knew he was smart and he would show that he was smart. He did not care. He had the opposite. He had ujb. He was full of himself. He loved to belittle the students. That's another one. That's an air for now. It's a sickness. What? So the person used to get rid of that. 
Don't become, don't have hassle towards somebody and also don't be full of yourself. Like, I know, they don't know, I know, they don't know. None of that. وَطَرِيقُ فِي نَفِي الْعُجْبِ أَنْ يُذَكِّرَ نَفْسَ وَأَنَّهُ لَمْ يُحَصِّلْ مَا حَصَّلَ بِحَوْلِهِ وَقُوَتِهِ How do you get rid of ujb? Conceit. That you acknowledge and you admit that you didn't get this because of your hard work or because of your strength. No, you didn't. Allah gave this to you. That's how you get rid of conceit. وَإِنَّمَا هُوَ فَضْلُ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And this is from the virtues of Allah that He's given you. فَلَا يَنْبَغِيَ يُعْجِبَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَخْتَرِعُهُ بَلْ أَوْدَعَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِيهِ And you shouldn't be full of yourself in something you never came with yourself. Who came with it? Who gave it to you? Allah. So how can you be full of yourself? The reason why conceit comes and person becomes full of them themselves is when they start to believe that they came with this themselves. But if you start believing that, no, I didn't come with this myself, it was given to me. Allah is the one who gave it to me. Then that destroys Uj. So that's how to kill conceit. How do you get rid of Hasid? He says, The person who goes against the person who comes with Hasid, the reason why they come with Hasid is because they are not aware of Allah's Qada and Qadr. The things that Allah has predestined. The person is not aware and does not know what Allah has predestined. Allah destined subhanahu wa ta'ala this virtue for this person. Then you as a person should not in any way, form or shape oppose Allah's qada and that which Allah has destined. And you should not dislike or oppose a wisdom. You should not oppose a wisdom that Allah has placed subhanahu wa ta'ala in which he is placing this person. You see this person memorizing and doing this. That's a virtue Allah has given to some people. Okay? You didn't get it, that's Allah's wisdom. Are you with me? But what you can come with is working hard and putting efforts in. And we'll stop there inshaAllah ta'ala. We now have the fifth um, bab, uh, which is the longest, the longest bab, the longest uh, bab of the book. We'll try to do that inshallah ta'ala. Uh, if we don't finish the book by the end of tomorrow, then we'll use Saturday and Sunday to finish it off inshallah ta'ala. Anything that I must, I might have said wrong, incorrect or mistake, slip of the tongue, fault, error, is from me as shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhim.